Hello, hello. We're back for another episode of Financial Freedom Series. My guest today, again, is Amy Oler with Cornerstone Home Lending. And Amy, I'm just so grateful that you agreed to do these calls with me this year. I have learned, I thought I knew everything, <laughs> but no, I didn't. There's a lot I didn't know. And so I think it's very important that you really keep an open mind in life and just always know all your options. So that leads me into what we're talking about today, which is the source of funds. We're going to talk about all the different sources that you can use for your down payment, for your home, for financing. So yeah. let's go, Amy. Well, I think that, you know, everybody wants to buy a home, but they want to know what are usable funds for down payment and closing costs. Or some people may be a little strapped for cash. And so they want to buy a home, but maybe they don't have um, all of the, the funds available to them. So I want to talk about source of funds and acceptable uh, funds available for down payment and for closing costs. So we can talk about personal funds. So, you know, you don't just have to have your money like in your checking and savings. You can actually get a 401k loan. So you can use your retirement funds for down payment and closing costs. Um, you can liquidate stocks, you know, RSUs. Um, and then the up and coming ever so popular Bitcoin yeah. you can sell Bitcoin. It's a little taxing for documentation. So please make sure that you get um, all of the information and details from your lender, but you can, you can do that. Um, you can also get a gift from a relative for a source of funds for down payment. Um, it's really pretty simplistic. Uh, it used to be the document documentation was kind of painful. Now we just have a simple letter that's signed by you and the donor stating that those funds are a gift and there's no need for repayment. That donor needs to be a relative. Um, it can be a cousin. It can be a distant relative, but it, it needs to be a family member or a relative. You can also get uh, funds from um, the state. There are there are down payment assistance programs that are available. There are loan programs that will allow 100% financing. That would be like VA um, if you're a veteran and USDA if the property is eligible for USDA financing and kind of on the outskirts of town. Rural. Yeah, rural, rural. areas for USDA. Yep. Got to be very careful um, yeah. when looking for those properties. So those are good sources for down payment. What um, about mattress money? What do you tell people? that? Because <laughs> I've had it happen. You laugh, but they've said, oh, well, I'm just getting it out of my safe or from <laughs> under the mattress. And I'm like, okay, well that won't work. Like we need to source it. So yes, I guess well, I'll, uh, you want to have conversations with your realtor as soon as possible. That's why yeah. I think if you think that you want to purchase a home within the year, these are the questions that, that come up and, and we need to discuss right away. Right. So yes, I've had clients over the past when we're documenting funds have sent me um, a, a picture of their Azorka water bottle, you know, full of coins and, and money that they have saved over the years. That's, that's another form of mattress money. It doesn't need to actually be stuffed in the mattress, but no, we need Need you to go ahead and cash out those coins um, and take them to your bank and um, and show proof of deposit. If you have money like that coming in and it's sitting in your own interest bearing account, like a checking and savings, we don't need to document it. So because um, we don't go past 60 days. So there would be no need for us to to document, say, a bank statement, you know, from three months ago. So if you are collecting coins and have a, a pretty big stash of money in a mattress or in an Azorka bottle, we would just ask that you go to the bank immediately and go ahead and cash in those funds and let them sit there. Um, and then we'll get a bank statement from you 60 days later. 
Perfect. Yeah. Great. Another thing, and I don't think you mentioned it, was like as the realtor, depending on the market, we can ask the seller to contribute some of your yeah. costs as well. So yeah, seller contribution has been very popular. Yeah. Um, so a seller or a realtor can't contribute to down payment but they can contribute to uh, closing cost, And so there are caps to what uh, kind of seller contribution you can get. So if you're doing a conventional loan and you're purchasing a primary residence or you're purchasing like a vacation or a second home and you're putting less than 10% down, the maximum seller contribution is going to be 3%. So 3% of the purchase price can be used towards closing cost. Um, if you're putting 10 to 25% down on a primary or a vacation home, the maximum contribution is 6% oh. of the purchase price. Um, and then if you're putting down more than 25% for a primary residence or a second home, then you can get up to 9% seller contribution. And so one would might say, well, wow, that's a lot. Uh, but with two one buy downs, three two one buy downs, um, there's all kinds of ways you can bake, uh, pay points to permanently buy the rate down. And all of that can be a, a, a contribution from uh, the seller. If you're using conventional financing and you're purchasing an investment property, you too can get seller contribution, but the maximum regardless of down payment is 2%. Um, so if you are an investor, you too can have that kind of seller contribution. I know investors are kind of surprised about yeah, that. That's good to know. Yeah. Uh, and this is all why it's so important to schedule that pre, pre app, pre app, consultation <laughs> right. with your realtor and your lender. Like you need to make sure that all your ducks are in a row and yeah. you know what kind of loan you're getting, you know what your credit is, you know all of the facts. This is not, I have so many people that just get started and they're like, we're ready to buy a house. And first question always, are you pre-approved? <laughs> nope, they haven't started that yet. So that's great when they have it, because then I would love to send them to someone that I, that's a good team fit for us. Like, and, you know, whenever we do like some surveys or when Fannie Mae does a massive questionnaire to um, all first time home buyers or people on the fence of buying, one of their biggest concerns is having the funds to do so. So um, it's shocking, but a lot of the public think that you've got to have 20 percent down or that before you go to application, maybe you have to have all your funds like sourced or like liquidated and all that. And it's just not true. So to your point, really having a conversation with a lender and your realtor, um, even when that just that thought crosses your mind that, you know, maybe I want to buy a house this year or maybe I want to get prepared now to buy a house next year. I, I don't think it's too soon to have a conversation right, with I your agree. team so that you know yeah. what to expect. Exactly. So. Perfect. Well, that is a good, good, that is some, some really good information. And um, we just have so much. So I'm glad that we still have several months left and would love to hear back from our audience. Like what are some subjects that you would like to discuss with the lender? So yeah. I know a lot of you are watching the replay or the YouTube video but just let me know, send me a message and let me or Amy know what you might want to learn more about with lending. I, one of the main reasons I had Amy do this series with me is because she's an investor herself and loves that um, building wealth through real estate investing. And so mm -hmm. she specializes in this. So if any of you are thinking of getting into real estate investing, she is the great, the best person to really reach out to, to see what you can do. Yeah. So, I'd love to help regardless if you're amateur or first time home buyer or an avid investor. It's always good to, to speak with the people that, that do this kind of day in and day out. So love I appreciate it. you having me on. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. And that's it. We'll see, see you, you next time. month. Thanks, everyone. Bye now.